Mm-hmm. I remember 1987, and I was sitting on the floor in the library of Prince George's Community College, about five miles from my house. And I had gone down there because I had pretty much gone through all of the books in the bookmobile and in my school that I wanted to read. And so I would go down to the community college and go through their collection of things that I wanted to read. And I remember finding some books in that college from two people. Not only books, but recordings. Back in the day, when people gave lectures, they would make albums out of them. So I found these albums from people who were giving lectures. And I remember, I couldn't check them out because I was not a student at the college, but I could sit there all day, every day, (laughs) and read these books and listen to these recordings. Because back in the day, they had record players in the library, and you could pull the records off the shelves, and you could play them in the library with your headphones on. That's what I was doing. And it was on that floor, in that library, at that college, that I found books by James Baldwin and Maya Angelou. And outside of my family, outside of people that I knew, like my mom and my dad and uncles and cousins and people in the family who were doing some things in their lives that I respected, but I didn't have any writers in my family. I didn't have any famous people in my family that I knew at that time. And so when I read these books, being fully aware that I wanted to write myself, it was the first time in my life that... I could look outside of my family and say, I want to be like that. I want to be like that. And that's the feeling that I got when I read Miss Maya's books and that when I read James Baldwin's books. I want to be like that. I want to do that. And so James Baldwin died on December 1st, 1987. And Miss Maya Angelou stood up at his funeral and she read some words for him and this was in December of 1987 and so today I'm going to read these same words for her for her okay this is what she read at James Baldwin's funeral and I'm going to read these words from Maya Angelou today for her when great trees fall when great trees fall when great trees fall rocks on distant hills shudder lions hunker down in tall grasses and even elephants lumber after safety when great Trees fall in forests. Small things recoil into silence. Their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly. Our eyes briefly see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory, suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die, and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls 
die after a period, peace blooms slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us. They existed. They existed. We can be. Be and be better. For they existed. Mm. Words from Maya Angelou. Miss Maya Angelou this morning as we honor her life, really, and her work and her ascension. I love that word. Her family released a statement on the day that she transitioned and said she made her ascension. And I said, yes, that is exactly amen. what a man. She made her ascension. She is walking with, she has joined the angels and okay. is walking with the ancestors. Yes, she has Absolutely. joined the angels and walking with the ancestors now. And you know, Miss Maya got her head held high as okay. always. Mm-hmm. As always, that As woman always. was amazing. And um, Robert, I, I, you know, I, I know we haven't made our introductions, but this is me, <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> and, um, she was just amazing. You know, I, I put something on my Facebook recently um, this week, and I said that she was really, you know, in America, we don't know royalty. And I met her at a, at a young age, an early age in my career. Um, I met her when I was working at the Oprah Show. And she was what I thought royalty was. When, you know, when, when you saw her, you thought, she, she must be a queen. She must be, you know, like, what, a princess? You know, actually, I said she might be a duke. Forget the duchess. She might be a duke. Because she was <laughs> tall. And she mm-hmm. stood, you know... She, because uh, probably of her dance training or whatever, but she was tall, she stood with her shoulders purposefully back. And and every piece of height that she had, she recognized it. She put it there. But, but it wasn't an arrogance. It was just with an assurance, with a confidence, oh. and with a regalness, with a, with a knowingness. And I use all those words to represent what she also put forth in her life. And for me, our introduction was just, I was like, wow, I've met a queen. I've met royalty, you know. I've met dignity. And I put those words in my Facebook bit because that's what it was. I met dignity. She was tall. She had on a white suit. I'll never forget it. She had on a beautiful white suit. And and I'll just, you know, go through the story of my Facebook page again. She, a producer was running after her and said, Maya, Maya, Maya. And we were standing at a craft service table. And she stood, she looked up, and she turned to that person, and she stopped them before they had anything else to say. And she said, I should be referred to as Ms. Angelou. And the person kind of, you know, sobbed and shuddered, and the, you know, because I understood that first of all, because I was, I was shocked that somebody would be calling me by a first name, because you know, in our community, you don't call an elder by their first name. That's just not something you do, you know, right? Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, really, in our culture, we are taught to in African American culture many times, particularly if you're in the South, we are taught to put some kind of handle on it when you're talking to a person. On it. it can be yeah, exactly. it can be Ms, it can be Auntie, it can be, you know, whatever. Something. But it has yep. to be something on it before you use their this first okay. name. So I, I really like that story a lot. I would just say, just to complete my thought about Miss Maya, that she has as I said, gone on. And really what I want to say is just well done. She did her work on this planet. She did her work. That's the inspiration that I take from her life, that she did her work, she did her work well, and she left a legacy, a legacy, a word that you always use, Michelle. She left a legacy, and now she can rest. 
And so I would say to her what I know that the creator of all things has said, is saying, will say to her, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. I aspire to do my work as well and leave a legacy as rich as Ms. Maya Angelou has left this morning. So well done, good and faithful servant. You know, when, when, when I heard that she had passed, for some reason, the image that had just been in my head is she decided it was time. It wasn't mm-hmm. that something took mm. her out. It was, wow. okay. I agree with that. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. And I'm allowing my spirit to uh, to leave. I, I, that, that's the first Honestly. thing that came to my mind. I did not feel like she died of sickness or she... I know they said, you know, she was having something, but I just felt like when she went to bed and she was asleep, like, you know, I'm she done. Well, her story. family, her family, her, the family statement backs that up because the statement that they released said, in part, that we are grateful that she made her ascension without loss of any acuity or comprehension. And that was their way of letting us know. She wasn't babbling in uh, unutterable words and not understanding what people were saying. She was herself, and she left her body. Right, right. So I think you're absolutely right, Dante. I think you're absolutely right. Of course, course we weren't in the room, so we don't know for sure. But spirit, you can get certain things through spirit. And I I, I think you're absolutely right right with that. She left as Maya Angelou, (laughs) you know? Yeah, she left. Yeah, she left. It's just like, okay, like, I'll see y'all later. I'm I'm gone. Mm. (laughs) I would just share this story. (laughs) I would share this story that many years ago in uh, Washington, D.C., at National Airport, uh, I was getting off the plane. I don't remember where I was coming from. And she was standing there. Just And as you said, Michelle, she's very tall, like maybe 6'2", I think. And so mm-hmm. she was just stepped like an oak tree. Her hands were in front of her holding her purse. <laughs> and she was standing there. And it took me, as I noticed it was her, it took everything in me to get up the courage to say something to her. Right. And I did. And I, it took, I mean, I was totally working with myself to have the courage to say something. Because I was going to pass her anyway, so I figured I'm going to say something. And so I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something to the effect of, oh, I'm such a big fan, I've read all your books. You know, the typical stuff. Uh-huh. And she, she never said a word. She looked at me, she reached out her hand, I took her hand, and she said, what is your name? And I said, Robert Wesley Branch. And she closed her eyes and said, Branch branch and it felt like to me like she was trying to divine in her in all of her world and experience had she ever wow. run across any what that name wow. meant to her who was i yeah. but she closed her eyes and she just said branch branch and then i remember saying to her well what why are you standing here by yourself like that and she thought she said i'm speaking at howard university and i'm waiting for someone to pick me up now these are some unspiritual thoughts that i had next but i'm gonna share with you <laughs> these thoughts that yeah. I, had. I, didn't, I didn't say this to her but I said in my mind, and, and I won't say the word that I use, but anybody who knows me can figure that word out. It's not a popular mm-hmm. word to use in, in our culture. In fact, some people disdain this word. But I said in my mind, I was like, these folks at, from Howard got her, Miss Maya Angelou, mm-hmm. standing out here okay. in the airport waiting for them. Uh-huh. What? Okay. What? Okay. Standing there waiting for these folks from Howard. I thought I was not Absolutely. happy with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But happy that, with that. That, that then just talks about the regalness that she demanded without demanding it. Her spirit, just it just said, royalty, it said, there's no way that you should have her standing here. You know, exactly. and she really was. I remember when she became the national treasure, and I was so, so proud because I was, what, you know, I, I impart various different gifts to students that stay with me. And one of the gifts that I have, three different books, and one of them is Maya Angelou's book, um, All God's Children Deserve Traveling Shoes. And I, I've given that book away to a couple of different people, and they no, none of them actually were familiar with who she was. And I was like, you guys have to know who she is. This is a woman who is a national Treasure. She is your American national treasure, you know. And so I, I just, just what's amazing too. I want to back up a little bit is when you think about 
her ascension when it makes you smile because you realize that it was her choice. You just feel like it's her choice. And so Dante, I to- totally, totally accept and receive, you know, what you were thinking because that's how it makes you feel. You feel like, yes, that ascension was her choice, and it makes you smile. And, and- you know, and and the thing about it is, with all that she has done, I mean, I told someone this week in reviewing her life, she has lived a life of many people, like five people. I mean, if you just yeah. take just one aspect of her life, that was just the lifetime of so many people. But for her to have lived such a dichotomy of so many different experiences. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we we talked about Malcolm X and Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King, and she says, Nelson, Martin, mm-hmm. you know, th- I mean, these are, you know, like like you and I and Robert are, you know, we, how we, yep. we are. Yep. You know, that's how she treated them, and, and, and these are the icons that we revere in our, throughout our American history and world history. You know, so I, on, on my list of it, I told her, you know, I call her a, a griot, the storyteller. Um, I had the privilege of listening to her when she came to Florida a and several years ago. Matter of fact, I guess my first year on the show, on the uh, Maya came, and I remember I was telling Robert, Robert said, go, go, go. And I went there, and it was just like your grandmother is telling these stories. She was telling stories, but they were, I call parables, because they were yes. points. She just wasn't talking for the sake of talking. She was right. trying to inspire in some principles, nuggets of wisdom and life lessons that we needed to hear for our everyday journey. And what I love is she wasn't just speaking to black people. She was speaking to all people. And she was all very intent. I'm not just catering to black people. That's who I am. That's who I claim. Mm-hmm. But I'm for all people, and I speak to all people. And, you know, I have white children. I have gay children. I have Jew children. I have Muslims. You know, That's she right. embraced all of Everybody. And that was just so yeah. fascinating about her, that she was so revered by all cultures. But she reminds what Robert does says, when you do the work, the work transcends your, at the heart of your work, it transcends cultures and generations. That's right. That's right. Beautifully expressed, Dante. I want to give a shout out to Miss Kenya, who was listening. Miss Kenya said to me yesterday, Michelle, she's like, um, I don't mean any harm. I appreciate the brothers and the shows that you've been doing, but when are Maisha and Michelle returning? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I said, well, <laughs> I said, well, Maisha is, will not be returning, but Michelle will be there tomorrow. She was like, oh, okay, let's get some sister energy oh, back up in there. I so, Miss Kenya, so you have got you. it today. Michelle is here front and present. also want to give a shout out to Brother Antonio. Glad you're here. Give a shout out to Brother Tyson. I'm glad you're here, Brother Tyson. Tyson put on Facebook a couple of days ago of his beautiful kitchen. I love a good kitchen space, and that is a nice oh. place to create meals you, for now, your soul. Now you, now so you I appreciate right that there. picture. I appreciate that picture, Brother Tyson, and I'm just waiting for an invitation now <laughs> to go <laughs> share some food up in that kitchen. I do want to say one thing, then I'm going to take a break, and then we'll come back, and we're going to be talking about consciously creating your next chapter. That's what we're going to be talking about after this break. But before we go to break, just to be complete with Miss Maya Angelou, and you can see this this Sunday on OWN, they're doing a whole evening tribute to honoring Maya, and they're going to play an interview that was really, for me, really, really, really seared into my soul, something that she said in this interview that they're going to play on Sunday. And Oprah was interviewing her in 1993, and this was right after she read the poem for President Clinton's inauguration on the Pulse of Mourning. And Oprah said, well, I'm sure that this was one of the greatest, I'm paraphrasing, but this is the gist of it. I'm sure that that was one of the greatest moments of your life. Had to be. I mean, only you were only the second poet ever to do that. And, you know, Maya just kind of looked at her. (laughs) She looked at her very closely, (laughs) you know, in the way that only she would look at you. Uh And she said, no, Oprah, that was not the greatest moment of my life. And Oprah was like, really? But come on, that was such a great moment. And she was like, Maya was like, that was a great moment, but it was not the greatest moment of my life. The greatest Uh moment of my life was when I was a young girl singing in the church choir. And we were singing a song. There was a line in the song that said, God loves you. 
And the preacher said to us, the choir director said, now sing that line again. And she said, we sang it again. God loves you. God loves me. And he said, now sing that line again. And they sang it again. God loves me. He said, now I want you to sing that line one more time. God loves me. And they sang it. And he said, now I want you to know it, that God loves you. And she said, Oprah, as a young girl, coming from where I came from in my life, to have the realization that the creator of all things, God loves me, Maya, me, that was the greatest moment in my life. Oh, wow. 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 Quintessential Maya Angelou moment. Quintessential okay. Maya Angelou moment. And the universal life lesson in all of that is you have you can see two polarities there. You can see a polarity in Oprah's question, which would be the yeah. matrix, and then you can see a polarity in Miss Maya's answer, which would be the spiritual realm. The natural right. realm and the spiritual realm. The natural it's realm would right. say, Well, you stood before kings and queens and you were the chosen one to recite at the presidential inauguration. Surely that was the greatest. That's all matrix right there. Right. That's right. all matrix. And the answer that God loves me was my greatest moment is all spiritual. So there go your forces right. right there in the world. The angel on one shoulder and the enemy on the other shoulder. Right there. Right there. You can see it in that question and then that answer. That the world will drive you into feeling and thinking that greatness comes from something that is outside of yourself. Something you do, something you say from the external, something you Uh do, something you say, or an exalted position that you hold. That's what the matrix will socialize you. That's the program. That's the app if you will, that you get from the Matrix. And what Ms. Maya was right. mentioning in that moment was the fact that God loves me, which means that if God loves me, I am one with that love. The, the love that created the universe is in me and loves me. That's the greatness. And I ain't got nothing to do with the Matrix right there. That's right. That's uh-huh. I ain't got nothing to do. That's wow. all about your own consciousness and taking the events in your life and processing them through a spiritual consciousness. That's what she taught us in that moment. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, well, let me just make sure that everybody is complete. Michelle, are you complete with what you wanted to say about Maya Angelou this morning? I think together we have completed it. And, yes, and I say blessings that I've gotten to know her and and thank her for, for adding to my spirit. Dante, are you complete with your comments about Ms. Maya Angelou? I, I am complete, lacking nothing. All right. So, Ms. Maya Angelou, we celebrate you, and we know that you are up there. I consider it like another angel that we all have looking down That's on. Right. Particularly, and this might not be true for everybody. This may not be true for everybody. Because we can certainly get her spirit through the work that she left. But the reason why I consider her a a personal angel now is because I had the chance to actually meet and touch her, and we actually connected in this lifetime. As much as I love James Baldwin, and you know, that is my man. That is my man right there. I never... I never met James Baldwin. I've, I was okay. never in the same room with him. I would never connected with him outside of his work. But to actually shake her hand and have that very brief conversation with her, which was my only connection, it happened. It happened. As she said in that point, it existed. It existed. That moment existed. That was very real for me. And the moment that Michelle shared was very real for her. So I do consider her an angel now. We all do. She's a national treasure. And so walk head held high, Miss Meyer. You will be missed. You will be missed. And so now I was thinking this morning that my quest is to, I want to make sure that I have, I have everything James Baldwin even thought about he was going to write. <laughs> if he even <laughs> wrote a scratch on a piece of paper, if he even wrote on a napkin, I have to now I have a picture of the napkin. You know, I have every <laughs> single scrap that has been released into the world from that brother. I have it. And that is my quest with Miss Maya now, to honor her life, not just with my words, but I am going to own every single thing that she wrote and published, whether it be book, CD, whatever it is, but that's how I want to honor her too, by Mm -hmm. adding her work to 
to the library that is my life. Of your life. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes.